As we're just one day away from the next round of votes in the nation. Early voting in Nevada already putting them on track for a record turnout. Nearly 75,000 people have already cast their votes ahead of tomorrow's caucus. Yeah, event. that's almost as many as voted last time around. We're going to have more on that coming up. But we begin with this new warning from the president. New intelligence officials warned lawmakers that Russia is trying to intervene in the 2020 election to help President Trump get reelected. The president was enraged when he learned of this briefing, and now he's replacing the director of national intelligence and other officials with Trump loyalists. Our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, starts us off from Washington. Good morning, John. Good morning, George. The intelligence community is warning that Russia is once again planning to interfere in a U.S. election. The president is infuriated, but not by what Russia is doing. Instead, he is angry that intelligence officials shared that information with Democrats in Congress. Overnight, the president held a campaign rally in Colorado as news broke about his decision to oust America's top intelligence official. Where else would you like to be but a Trump rally, right? ABC News has confirmed that intelligence officials told the House Intelligence Committee last week that Russia is planning to interfere in the 2020 campaign to bolster the president's reelection. That briefing, which detailed how Russia would use social media to spread disinformation in support of President Trump, infuriated the president, especially the presence of Adam Schiff, the Democrat who led the impeachment proceedings in the House. The president attacked Schiff again last night in Colorado. That little Adam Schiff, what a crooked politician. He's a corrupt politician. Sources tell ABC News the president believed Democrats would use the information from the briefing against him. Democrats overnight defended the intelligence officials and congressional oversight. To act like they did something that they stepped out of their lane and they did something that was totally inappropriate is wrong. That is their job. According to The Washington Post, in response to the briefing, the president called in then acting director of national intelligence Joseph McGuire to the Oval Office on Friday for a, quote, dressing down. And by this Wednesday, McGuire was out of a job, replaced by Ambassador to Germany Rick Grinnell, a staunch Trump loyalist. In addition, Cash Patel, a former NSC official and author of a congressional report attempting to discredit the Russia investigation, has been elevated to a senior role under Grinnell. And this morning, as officials continue to worry that Russia will employ various cyber warfare techniques, including ransomware, to undermine and disrupt our upcoming election, ABC News has confirmed the additional departures of two more top intelligence officials. Rick Grinnell is not expected to be on the job long. Uh, in, senior officials here at the White House say the president will soon nominate a permanent choice to be director of national intelligence. Last night, speaking to reporters on Air Force One, the president said that one candidate for that job is Congressman, Republican Congressman Doug Collins. Uh, he is another Trump loyalist who led the president's defense or helped lead it in the impeachment proceedings in the House. George. Right, and Grinnell can stay in the job until the next official is confirmed. Meantime, we're still dealing with the fallout of the last Russia investigation, the sentencing yesterday of Roger Stone, the president's longtime political confidant. And, and the judge was pretty tough uh, in, in giving the sentence. He said that Roger Stone, she said that Roger Stone was not prosecuted for standing up for the president. He was prosecuted for covering up for the president. But the president continued to, to defy the judge and the attorney general by, by tweeting and speaking out during the sentencing and a pardon for Stone very much on the table. Oh, absolutely, George. And as you said, it was during the, sentence, the sentencing proceedings that the president tweeted that he hopes that Stone will be fully exonerated. This appears to be in direct, uh, de uh, uh, directly defy what the attorney general said. He said that tweeting on such matters makes it impossible for him to do his job. As for the judge, she also said in making the sentence that, quote, the truth still exists. The truth still matters. Otherwise, everyone loses. George. Okay, John Carl, thanks very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.